Hi, Chris Wallace from Second Swing. We're in Carlsbad, California today at TaylorMade headquarters. We're actually at the Kingdom, which is just an incredible facility. I've got Chandler Carr with me, Global Product Manager for TaylorMade. Chandler, good yep. to see you. Yeah, it's nice to see you too. Exciting time. M5, M6 drivers coming out. We're going to talk specifically about M5 right now. I know you're super excited. A lot of buzz. Speed injected twist face. You guys have been working on this for a long time and you really feel you got a game changer. Yes, the speed injection twist face is really a way for us to maximize ball speed for everybody, right? You know, a lot of times what happens with drivers is sometimes some of them maybe aren't quite as hot as others. Now what you've done is you've taken them past the legal limit and then you're bringing them back so that every single driver you produce is right at yep. sort of the maximum in terms of efficiency. Exactly, you know, every golfer, when you walk into a golf shop or your facility, um, everyone's kind of playing the speed lottery is what we call it, right? Or that club that you got fit for may not be the one as, uh, or as good as the one that you are buying off the rack. This way it ensures us that we are getting the fastest possible ball speeds and that every driver, the one that you got fit or the one that was sold to me or the one that my buddy has or the one that Tiger Woods has, they're all going to be the same. And we do that through a couple different ways. We thin out the face by an additional 20% relative to last year's face, so it's thinner. That allows us to make it too spicy, you know, too hot. And we tune every single head back down to that limit through the speed injection process. Yeah, so the speed injection process, you see the small uh, little screw, they look like screws almost on the face, and you inject resin yep. into that to slow the face down to get it exactly where it needs to be at the max. Tell me a little bit about why resin is the, the material that's chosen to do that. Well, I mean, it goes right up against the face and that's where all the impact is taking place. So we, and we don't want something to absorb energy. We want something to make sure that it's really a part of the face once it's, you know, once it's done. So the two ports you see on the face allow us to inject that resin into each head and into specific locations too. So if there is, um, you know, each head is tested. And let's say some heads might only require um, more tuning on the toe or the heel or both. The reality is every head's different, but this tuning process gets us right back to where every head now leaves the same. And it's actually the last stage in the manufacturing process. A lot of people don't know this, but everything you do to the head, from the paint you put on it to the amount of polishing that's done for shaping, uh, the crown when it's bonded, all have an effect on how fast the face is. But we can get rid of all those variables, and at the end of the, at the, end of the day, when that's the last step in the process that we inject it. Every head it starts off with some variability and then leaving the same. Yeah, and by making the club face 20% faster, you're also expanding the sweet spot. So players are gonna not only get maximum ball speed on those center strikes, but when they're a little bit towards the heel, a little bit towards the toe, they're gonna have that ball speed protected. A part of the benefits of starting off with a club that is illegal is that you do get a bigger sweet spot. You know, the faster you make the face, the thinner you make the face, everything gets faster, right? So your sweet spot was here, now it's a substantially bigger area. I think it's close to a 66% larger sweet spot relative to M3. And also, you know, this driver's gonna do fair very well in terms of accuracy thanks to Twist Face. Yep. Now, Twist Face was obviously introduced in M3 and M4, but for maybe those who weren't familiar but are gonna take a look at M5 and M6, give us a quick refresher on twist face and what that does for the player. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm really glad that you asked about twist face because it was a really a breakthrough technology in M3 and M4. And we, you know, said to our customers last year that, hey, this is a technology that will live on and we're, st we're sticking with it and it works. And it's proven technology that has shown benefits on tour and also with guys like me and you. And twist face, you know, what we've done is that we've um, optimized the face curvature based on typical impact location for most golfers. So a shot hit low on the heel, what happens? Well, it's spinny and kind of goes off to the right, doesn't go anywhere. A shot hit high toe, well, that's a snap hook, that's going nowhere. So we open the face more on the toe to give you more loft and a more open face angle. And we actually de-loft it on the, on the heel and close the face on the heel. So basically what we're doing is we're optimizing the spin relative to impact location. So now your spin deviation is very minimal. So you don't have this big spike in spin based on where you hit it. So sure. now your shots are going straighter, they're going further, and they're more consistent. Now M5 specifically has some different features as well from M6, yep. most notably a, a sort of redesigned T-Track, which 
I read it's going to offer golfers almost 1,800 sort of unique settings in terms of fitting for, the, for a golfer or a fitter. And also uh, with the backtrack, which is going to create some right bias or left bias for yep. players who need it, they're also not going to lose any MOI when they use those settings. Correct. Yeah, so there's always a benefit to moving weights. And we've obviously been doing movable weight technology going all the way back to R7, right? So we know that there's proven benefits of uh, fitting the club and optimizing that club just for you. But now that we have a longer T track that's moving longer from front to back, and we're actually taking that track and skirting it around the perimeter. So now, not only the weights, but the track itself is aiding in uh, increasing the MOI. We're moving that weight to the, you know, that's actually in the track itself, pushing that weight further back. And now you can adjust the left to right bias. Now you have a high MOI setting as well. You can take those weights, split it in the back, you get huge MOI benefits from moving those weights and giving you a really a, a max forgiveness setting. So there's, you know, if we want to talk numbers, about 600 RPM spin change from the most forward to the most back and about um, a degree and a half of loft change, purely just with the weights. But then that's not even including the loft sleeve, which has plus or minus two degrees of adjustability. So for four degree range there, I mean, this driver can fit a lot of golfers and really help people optimize their shot. Yeah, and also unique to M5 is that in addition to the, the standard model, which I'm holding at 460cc, yep. there's going to be a tour version at 435cc, a little more compact. Well, with the M5 Tour, you know, we know that there's definitely golfers out there that really can see the benefits of a really ultra low spin driver, plus the smaller head size. For some golfers, you know, take an avid college player or a touring professional, they want to look down and see maybe that more compact shape that gives them confidence. When they have confidence, they're swinging harder. You know, it's just a better fit for that golfer. So we're definitely targeting the M5 Tour for that, you know, more skilled or better player. And because of the smaller size, there's a big benefit of aerodynamics too. Um, speaking actually both for the 460 and uh, the Tour, the arrow has been really optimized for both of these clubs. Chandler, great information. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Glad to do it.